Hear you. There we go. That was me. It's hey. the guy with the bow tie checking with you live for another edition of Business with Benefits. To my right, I have the amazing Sean Specey and his buddy Billy. I'm going to call you Buddy Billy today. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. I'll take that name. Perfect. So um, we're here today talking about, um, first of all, hashtag team live. Let us know where you are. Hashtag team replay. Please comment to let us know that so we can know where you are and how you're representing. And we're still in the middle of COVID-19, but there's a few changes in our local state of Georgia. So uh, first of all, how are you guys doing today? Doing great, doing great. We're excited to be live with you. We we go Instagram live, we do Facebook live. This is our first time LinkedIn live, so this is fun. Awesome, okay. Yeah, really. Billy, how about you? Yeah, we're we're in Atlanta. You know, you look outside and you see the, the beautiful weather and you see all the wonderful things that are uh, going on outdoors, man, but we're missing some baseball some masters <laughs> some people interacting i love high-fiving people so this virtual high five is a little tricky but uh um, yeah. in your content for a while and i'm i'm interested to see how this is going to flow to see if we're going to have like a little uh hip-hop uh thing going on today if we're going to talk uh online business if we're going to talk about connecting with people so wherever we go just know we are humbled and honored to be on thanks for having us well, thanks for joining me. Um, I, I couldn't think of a better crew of people to have talking about virtual events as um, the online world is blown up. Zoom is coming like a verb now. Um, it, <laughs> Zoom wasn't a thing. And I was like, I'm going to Zoom this person. So now it's a verb. So um, obviously, you guys' world has changed somewhat. So for the people that don't know who you two are, kind of give them some feedback on why they should listen to you about online events. I'm trying to decide if I want Sean to go or me to go. <laughs> We're so excited about this topic. We both get the opportunity uh, to really help people tell their story in mm -hmm. so many unique ways. And that's what that's what we do at Elevate. We help brands tell their story through unique events. And now that things are going virtual, um, mm -hmm. we have so many brands that are asking us to do that. So I'm going to let Sean start us off, and then I'll just jump in where it fits. Yeah, but first we got to hear how you're doing. You asked us how we're doing. you got to share how you're doing, Daryl. Well, I'm good. It's the uh, the three kids at home. This makes it different. I, I work from home somewhat, but uh, I've been, I haven't cracked my car up but probably twice in the last three weeks. So um, like and not paying as much for gas, but I'm liking the interacting more online. I've been on LinkedIn for about 10 years. So 
I'm humbled that LinkedIn gave me live access when there's only 2,500 people that have it. But I like sharing with people. So I'm curious to learn from you guys because I'm new to the online world a little bit video wise. So I'm curious about you guys feedback and interesting topics you can share with people to help make them better at that. But thanks for asking me. So go ahead, Sean, take it away. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up down in Florida. Um, I have the, the humble opportunity to work with Billy. I've known him since 2011, really before he started Elevate in 2012. And I grew up on a lake in Florida. So I grew up preparing the weekend to have people over for the 4th of July and Labor Day weekend. And I fell in love with the events, basically like creating an experience for people because we'd prepare the boats, grilling out for food and getting inflatables and sweeping the dock. And that's what I would get to do professionally now. Like not, not the boats necessarily, although, hey, if you need help with a boat in an event, let me know. <laughs> um, but we, we get to spend hours now preparing to help people experience something. They get to hear a message. They get to participate. They get to um, join a community that believes in something, what they believe in. That's what we get to help do. We actually uh, here in our Elevate virtual studio, we're outside not too far from where you're at, Daryl. We're in Norcross, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. The ATL represent, and these are some of the brands that we get to work with. So we get to help people like Auburn University, Coca-Cola, Racetrack, Delta, Chick-fil-A, Honda, Arby's, like so many different brands tell their story through remarkable experiences. So it's a lot of fun. We love what we get to do. We get to sometimes teach, sometimes introduce the teacher. It depends on what's needed. Um, we have a simple process that we take people through that helps them go from an idea to people are in the room, something is happening, and they get to watch their or participate with their audience engaging with their message. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and the Elevate brand was born and the word just simply means to lift. And so we chose the color blue and you can see the E and you can see the wing. And the idea is to help the best brands in the world tell their story in a unique way. And Sean mentioned it, that sometimes we're the teacher and sometimes we're the behind the scenes type person. We always say that we wear the jersey of the clients that we serve. So brands that hire us to come in and create the run of show and the stage, lighting, sound, production, what is said when, how do we make this video connect? How do we make sure our team members and our clients are smiling and they're spending money with us and the economy's working and all those sorts of things. So as things adjusted and changed, as we know, COVID-19 or whether you call it Dorona or whatever, you call it, <laughs> right. uh, whatever, whatever name that you give it, we all have some choice names for it, but it's adjusted the way we do life, the way we do business. I have three kids of my own. I have a kindergartner, a first grader and a second grader. So uh, I can now put teacher in my Instagram profile and my right. profile as well. But uh, I'm learning a lot these days about how you can transfer what happens from a live perspective to a digital perspective. I grew up in Atlanta. I uh, got to play baseball at Auburn. Then I played for the Phillies for a little while and playing college or professional sports. And um, as, as you loving, loving music as well. I love music. I grew up listening to outcast and okay. run DMC and, and Eminem. And um, I love hip hop music. I actually wrote, um, a series of blogs a couple years ago called hip hop raise me and mm -hmm. I love hip hop and story and interaction and fun and and figure out how to put all those things together the best brands in the world are asking us to do that from a live event standpoint and now we're just transferring that same energy that same passion uh, over to a virtual event it's actually been really really fun it's unique and it has its challenges um, yeah to be on this interview with you i we've never had a chance to see each other in person but uh, i do feel like i know you i see your smile you know, I'm connected with you. So we're asking brands, what is it that you really lose? I mean, what, mm. when you're doing it through, when you're connected with someone this way, what do you actually lose? So yeah, it's been, it's been unique and fun. Perfect. And I, I got to tag my buddy, John Cowan. He's my mentor. He played minor league baseball. I want to say for the Cardinals at one point. Um, so maybe you two cross paths in a, 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 a stadium somewhere at some point. Yeah, he, he probably hit a home run off of me at some point. So. <laughs> <laughs> But that brings an interesting point. So um, we haven't met in person and I'm in, I have a, a team of agents that I train and working with benefits and insurance. And I had to talk to them about the only difference now is proximity. Um, proximity was something that people kind of held on to that. I'm better in person. I'm better in person. And now that proximity is gone. So have you seen a lot more clients kind of clamoring for help from you guys in the recent events? Yeah, it's been interesting. You know, we, we put out a video on YouTube called Give Your Events CPR and just broke down the CPR to what brands could do and what they would be thinking about as they bring their people together, whether it's their clients that they want to sell them stuff and serve them, or if it's their team members that they want to help them thrive in the, in the workplace. And the C simply stands for cancel. 
you could cancel your event. That is a very real option. And a lot of brands are doing just that. But I ask brands before they cancel, just take a quick time out and ask themselves, what does it say to your constituents, whether it's your board or whether it's your team, when you just totally cancel something? And the P stands for postpone. I know when the masters were postponed, it felt a lot different than the, when the NCAA tournament was canceled. It's just a different vibe when you postpone it. And then that R stands for reimagine. And I love Disney World. Um, I probably love it more than my kids do. But there's this ride there called the Carousel of Progress. And there's this song that says there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. I believe in positivity and optimism um, more than anything in the world. I just think they're really, really good traits to have. And the, the glass is simply half full. And I believe that you can put rose colored glasses on and make a situation better. And the best brands are asking, how do we do that in a really like real and authentic way? not spin it. This is a very hard time in culture. It's a very tricky time with teams. It's tough to build culture. There's tricky things there, but there are some beautiful, wonderful things that can happen out of it. We've seen John Krasinski with some good news. He's got an amazing show that just talks about the good things that are happening. And when the entire cast of Hamilton on Broadway came together to sing a song to this girl that could not go on a trip to Broadway to see Hamilton live it was beautiful. And I think the best brands in the world are grabbing a hold of that. We're seeing a lot of unemployment. Uh, we are seeing a lot of people that are going out of business, and obviously that's a very real valid thing. And I don't want to run past that and say just try harder because it is hard yeah. right now. But the best brands are asking, how could we reimagine? Mm -hmm. What are parts of this that we could actually bring to the table? And we have some great partners that that are deciding not to cancel or postpone, but are pushing forward and see some really good results. Well, it's also not just large companies, also, right? Mm -hmm. Events are a great way to connect authentically with your clients and with your team. It's the reason why a local brewery or a local restaurant, like my wife and I live just outside downtown Duluth. And so we love going over and truck and tap would have sync, mm -hmm. right? Where you get a bingo card and they play a song and you have to like find the artist or find the name of the song. And the reason why they do events there is because people want to come together. They want to have fun. They want to have a message or participate in something going on that other people are joining in. It's the reason mm -hmm. why morning events are so powerful. Like watching something on TV is just way different than being there in person and feeling the energy like an Atlanta United game. And so it's not just the large brands, it's, it's small companies, it's small organizations that have to figure out, Hey, if I can't get my, if I can't get person to person and face to face with my client, how do I do that virtually? And that's what we love helping do from like we just in the other room in our conference room, we have a giant wall that's painted with whiteboard paint and the whole thing. And it says on the phrase activating ideas. And so what we love help doing, we actually have another YouTube video on our channel. So shameless plug, go to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great stuff there. We have a video that we released just three and a half weeks ago, and it's got almost 50,000 views on it because it's three icebreaker games that you can play with your people or mm. with your family. And it's just through zoom. And we just wanted to help people through that. So yeah, it's fun. Like it's, it's challenging. We've been thinking a lot about like lemons and lemonade, right? Mm -hmm. I actually had a bowl of lemons in here last week in order to demonstrate, like it feels like someone dropped off a whole box of lemons on everyone's front doorstep. <laughs> the country shutting down. Right. Right. Meals. But uh, Plato is credited with saying that necessity is the mother of invention. And this is where like America, Americans in general can help each other. Like mm -hmm. I know specifically American ingenuity can be at its finest right now. Because one of the other parts that we talked about is how uh, it's not Spotify, but it's, there's a lot of household names like Venmo yeah. and Uber and a couple of like Airbnb. Airbnb. They were they were created in the last time that the economy fell in 2008 2009 yeah what companies are going to explode right now or even be born with what's happening yeah i think i listened to tony robbins on the podcast he mentioned uh most of the most powerful companies came out of winter and not, not the physical winter but the economic winter so i'm curious to see what comes out of this mm -hmm. and um quick shout out from the audience we had reed rouseman co-founder of fresh benny said congrats on leading the charge by hosting live virtual events so i got a little fan there yeah um so this is a good thing you guys work for large companies and small companies so when people see coca-cola uh yeah. you know university of georgia and things like that what are some things that these small companies can do that these large companies aren't doing to kind of stand out 
Yeah, mm-hmm. so I've I've uh, I've been accused of being the Robin Hood of the event industry, which I really <laughs> so and we like to be the Robin Hood of the event industry, not just for the events you put on, but also for the culture that you can create. So I wrote my first book called Culture Reconstructed uh, that came out in January, and I did not predict COVID nineteen, but I do know that rebuilding something is really important. So you can pick that up on Amazon. There's the audio and the um, the Kindle version there, but in that book. We've decided what are the best brands in the world doing you could bring back to small businesses. And from an event standpoint, how could you do two things? How can you make your team members smile and your customers rave? That's yeah. that's really the goal of business. And whatever size business you have, how many team members you have, how much revenue you create, you can figure out ways to make your team members smile and your customers rave. And so Sean mentioned our process a little bit. It's, it's in our hallway here to our office. Every one of you that are watching, uh, when you are able to not... Uh, shelter in place and be where you are. We love to have guests at our office and take them on our office tour. There's three buttons on the wall that you push and lights come on and it just simply lay out our, lays out a process of listen, design, produce. And during that tour, we shoot a confetti can over you. There's a really fun interactive tour that we have. But whether you're a big business or small business, we really challenge people to lean in with their ears and ask mm-hmm. this question. Ask their team really, really closely and, and ask them, this is going to sound so simple, but what do you want to see? Like if you just if you just start with that question, what do you want to see, and then and then sit back and take notes and literally just listen because that's where the that's where the, the beauty can happen, especially if you're a small business owner. I try to do this with my team as much as I possibly can. Now we're running full speed, and as things are adjusting or changing, I just have been reminded so much of the power of just simply leaning in and listening. And uh, Andy Stanley, who's the pastor of North Point Community Church in Atlanta, um, he said this phrase recently, just blew me away. He said, "People now need to hear your voice." more than they need to see your words. And I think for the small business owner is people hearing your voice just goes way beyond just having your words because you're moving so fast. So those small business owners, a couple of tips that I would give you is pull your team in the same room and don't dictate, uh, ask a question and get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Because here's what I know is people support what they help create. And mm-hmm. my and other small businesses that I've worked with is how could you empower your team members to make decisions to move forward? Now, if you're the boss, if I'm the founder and president of Elevate. I, I know the buck stops with me in, in every area, but I do my best to empower my team to do that. Mm-hmm. And from an event standpoint, don't get overwhelmed by the technology. I mean, Sean, who's sitting next to me, has done an amazing job of really uh, – he's our chief strategy officer, but he's also our CTO as well, our chief technology <laughs> officer in a lot of ways over these last few weeks because I would say him and other team members on our team at Elevate are just learning new platforms. Mm-hmm. We're learning new things, and we can't uh, start with it saying how we can't do it. We have to start with, yeah, we're going to, we're going to figure that out. We're going to make that happen. There's a great book by uh, Maria Forleo that's just called everything is figure outable. So if you're a small business owner, start with that question with your team and then really start with the fact that we can make this happen Mm -hmm. and don't start with can't. Well, and we're super honored too by, uh, who was it that gave us the shout out? Like congratulations on doing virtual events. Who was that? Oh, Reed Russman. He's the co-founder of Fresh Bennies. Okay. Yeah. So like, thank you, Reed. But the interesting part about it is like there, if you go to like a large venue and you're sitting in the audience, there's usually, especially with like large scale or even a football game or a baseball game, there's usually a camera pointed at it. And then a lot of times half the people are watching the TV screen, the TV anyway. So there's ways, there's ways that people have already been interacting with technology, even while they've been in the room or in the venue with their events. Mm-hmm. And the principles really stay the same. Like you, you mentioned that you have three kids. Billy has three kids. My wife and I, we've got one. And I, sometimes she feels like three kids wrapped into one. But uh, I'm learning a lot from her. Like when I get home, she just wants to be, she wants to feel seen and she mm-hmm. wants to feel heard. And that's the way that I feel a lot of times. And that's the way that small businesses and large businesses, our customers feel, they want to feel seen and they want to feel heard and they want to feel known. And small businesses, like we are a small business. We've got Mm -hmm. nine people on staff full time and one of them is a full time intern. So we're a small business also. So we're going through this just with everyone else. And when coronavirus hit, Billy and I were actually, we were uh, the the day that the World Health Organization was declared a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We had a flight to go up to New York City. We were going to meet with the NFL, with Citizens Bank, and with VaynerMedia, three very large companies. And at 4 a.m., we had a 6.30 a.m. flight. We were texting each other. We were like, do we go? Do we not go? Because it was starting to hit the fan. And we were like, all right, we just can't pass this up. So we go and we meet with them in person. We're walking around the streets of New York. 
I'm like having lunch and I see the news come out. It's a pandemic. We're like, great, we're in New York right now while this is happening. But we we came back and that Monday, that was a Wednesday. That Monday we came in and I said, hey, Billy, like our leadership team, I've got a crazy idea. This space that we're sitting in, it was floor to ceiling, ceiling shelves of our microphones, our mixers, and our like this whole space. There was no pipe and drape. There was no screen. There was no cool lighting. And so we had to reimagine our business just like other small businesses are doing now. So it takes a little bit of creativity, but you, you asked the question, Daryl, of like what can small businesses do that large ones can't? And I'd say they can make their customers feel seen, feel known, and feel heard a little bit more personal than large ones can. Large ones can maybe make them feel a little bit more like, oh my gosh, like what if Home Depot reaches out to you and wants to go Instagram live with you? That's a little bit different than like a small business, but a small business can do it, still do it. And it's just taking a small step of bravery. Like just this past weekend, I had never used this one software in order to go through like what we're using right now. It's a little bit different than StreamYard, which it looks amazing. Like this sounds amazing. So hopefully the user experience is great, but it's just trying new things and mm -hmm. being comfortable with saying like, look, things have changed. I'm just trying something new. Yeah, we had, we had an feedback. event. We had an event we were hosting with 180 people. It was our virtual <laughs> event that a client was you know, paying us for to do the event. Uh -huh. And we set it up and it was going great. We had a DJ spinning live and we were taking requests and it was interactive. We played a game on the screen. I mean, it was it was it was on point. And then I swiped the wrong way on the laptop and I locked us out of our own party. So there's 170 <laughs> people there and the for, only five people, minutes. for five minutes. And I'm like, I don't know how to get back in. We literally couldn't lock back uh -huh. into our own party. Yep. I've never been kicked. I've been kicked out of parties, but I've never been kicked out of my own party. <laughs> right. That's a new one. <laughs> uh -huh. So it sounds like the small business is more agile. They can kind of adapt to this and turn on the dime and kind of change when they need to, uh -huh. um, which is great because I think that's needed right now in the current environment we're in. So what are some missteps you're seeing people are doing? Because I, I, I wrote the copy for this talking about webinars you go to sleep on that are kind of boring and it's just, it's a PowerPoint slide, somebody yep. talking, you can't see them. So what are some big missteps people are missing when they're saying, I had an event in person, mm -hmm. I'll just make it a PowerPoint you know, webinar right now. What are some missteps they're having right now? Yeah, there's so many directions I can take that question. Uh, the best resource that we can give is virtual event secrets dot today. I don't know if you want to link that up there. Um, but if you go to there, we have a ton of free content and a couple of our trainings on there is how do I make my virtual event awesome? How do I lead my team over the internet? And what does work from home look like? And we do our very, very best to make it interactive, make it fun. And I think a couple of rules that I think I'd love to hear Sean's thoughts too is the first thing I think of, particularly for a virtual event, is in theater, when you're there and the seats are in place and everybody's ready for the play and the actor comes out on stage, when the actor first goes up on the stage, there is this concept called breaking the fourth wall. And the fourth wall is uh, where I would interact. And when I flub a line or something doesn't go well, the actor sort of takes a deep breath and you see that they're human. I challenge people on their training. One is don't call it a webinar because it webinar for me has a bad connotation. Call it a hangout or call it a connection point, or call it a meeting. Do your very best in the first three to five minutes to break that ice. Mm -hmm. And it's it's weird. I, I did a training uh, live here to office on Friday. And even me being an event professional who's done this for many, many years, I get a little nervous. I'm like, ah, this is dumb. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do the icebreaker. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into the important stuff. But I played this video that I wasn't going to play. And it was three minutes long. And it was about leaderships and how, how leadership and how people should care. And it was amazing to watch. There was water flow, there was tears in the room, and they were connecting with it. And it was because of that video moment uh, that I broke the ice with them. And so ice breaking could look really, really different in different scenarios. But I would say do your very best to understand that what you say is not as important as what they hear. Mm -hmm. they don't just hear with their ears, they hear with their heart. And so if you can realize that from the person on the other end perspective, it's not just the words that you say, it's getting real for a second. Like if I were to come off this microphone, yeah, I can't hear you. <laughs> right? And so I, I try to do my best to find ways that I can just connect with that person, not just try to give them more stuff for here, but try to connect for here. So that's my biggest thought is to break that fourth wall. Yeah. Breaking the fourth wall is, um, and it, it has, like what Billy said, it has to happen right at the beginning. And um, so Billy has published his first book. I'm actually in the middle of writing um, what I hope to be my first book coming out soon. And it's about what we do at Elevate. And it's about breaking the fourth wall. And I was actually just working on it this morning. I created what I call the principle of crossover. 
And so in the fourth wall, we talk about how there's a stage and there's an audience, there's this wall in between, and there has to be crossover. And the way that you do that is you have to have your message from stage cross over into the audience, and you have to have the audience participate in something from stage. And so one of the ways that we do it is we say, all right, drop a comment below and say where your name is and where you're, you're, where you're from. So I actually love to see that. If there's anybody watching this, go ahead and type in the chat, where are you tuning in from? I'd love to hear that. And then we love to use polls and we allow to use polls like one organization that we partner with. Um, the, what they did is they wanted to do a give back. They said, hey, here's a Venmo link that you can give, but we are gonna vote as a company. And it allowed the audience to sway what was happening on the stage, right? The stage just happened to have shifted. The stage is now through the screen. And so using the poll and using the chat to interact with people, if you can't bring them on video, in order to have these authentic interactions and you got to acknowledge people in comments, just like you did with that comment a while ago. So mm -hmm. it really is allowing the audience to participate in what's happening. And, it, and not, not just that, but also acknowledging that they're there. Like my wife and I were at Swan, in Swanee, Georgia, and we went to go see the, the cat in the hat with some friends and our daughter. And it's an amazing show. Like it was funny, it was relevant. They made it with like great music. So you have to do those things. But then they also had the characters running around the audience, right? Mm -hmm. They had the characters running up and down the aisles. The kids were pointing. That's why Cirque du Soleil is so great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> yeah. So they make you feel like you're influencing what's happening on stage and participating rather than just watching. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing. That's, that's really the biggest thing. Awesome. That's what I think I like about this this new era because it, we see that everybody's at home now. So you can watch CNN, the mm -hmm. local news, ABC, anything. Everybody's at home. But the difference with, I think, this medium of using social media is you actually get the engagement and interaction yep. where TV doesn't have that. And the, the speak yep. on engagement we had, uh, David VR said yes to something you said. I didn't catch it right away. <laughs> but um, he also, see, he's in Arizona. So, David, thanks for tuning yeah. in from Arizona. I lived in yeah. Arizona for three years. I lived at I lived 32nd Street and Camelback. Is that right? Okay. 32nd Street and Thunderbird for two years there. Yeah, I lived in Vegas for 11 years, so I was practically in Arizona. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Ray Caldwell, a friend of mine, he said, what is the best way to take an event virtual on a budget? So that's okay. probably a good question for a lot of small businesses. So take mm -hmm. it away. Yeah, virtual on a budget. So the key word is virtual. Second word is the budget. So virtual, uh, it's much easier than you think. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a training out there about how to make your virtual event awesome. We just released a YouTube video this last Friday. Uh, if you go to Elevate Experiences YouTube channel, um, I should make sure I say LinkedIn, 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 so the algorithm can catch back up. But go to YouTube <laughs> and uh, make sure that you check out that video. It's called How to Do a Virtual Event. And I lay, I lay out specifically how to actually do that. It's thinking about your platform thinking about the microphones, the technology, what you need from that standpoint, thinking about your agenda, what should you say when, how do you create your slides, like what all those pieces should be. So make sure you go check out uh, that video because that will really help you. The budget side of it. So dollars that you place into something matter, right? Um, we do our best not to communicate price but value. And Elevate Experiences, we're poised to help um, as many brands as we possibly can put on their virtual experience. And right now, just like every brand in the world, our uh, products are drastically discounted. So if there's someone out there saying, hey, I'd love to talk to the Elevate team about this thing that I have, we have a lot of brands that come to us and, and we give them insights and we help them think through it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they actually bring us on to host their event for them. I was just on a, on a phone call just before this, Sean and I both, uh, with a young lady from a brand that will uh, not be revealed at this moment, <laughs> right. and, but, but a, a huge client who said, hey, can you come help us do this thing? And I walked her through this 45 minute experience we're going to create. And she said, this is going to lead to so much. I said, that's cool if it does, but if it doesn't, we really don't want to help you tell your story. And so money is tricky right now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure Daryl, you're like, this is, I love seeing people that forgot to turn off their marketing campaign during COVID-19. So you're still, uh, getting them about free stuff. I can't like, stand that so much. It drives me crazy. Uh, like ruin, ruins the brand. So we want to do our very best to meet the needs of the people who are there and be in the times that we're fully in. And we totally understand that budget's an issue, which is why we're putting out as much free content as we can to help folks grow. Yeah, that's that's good. You did that. Cause I saw I saw Kevin Hart had a Zoom call with his buddies, and um, he said, "Hey, how do y'all feel about the economy and changing your prices right now?" And all of them were like, "Nah, forget that. I'm not doing that. They better pay up." And I was like, "That's a bad brand move because <laughs> people are losing a ton." And he didn't say it, but he started to say, "Hey guys, come on, get with it. We're everybody's losing money. Cut it down." 
So um, would you say that it's easier for a small business to work with you now just because of everything that's happened? Yeah, so we enjoy conversations with people. We like really figuring out what folks are trying to do. So we work with giant brands all the way down to folks that are just getting started. And sometimes for us, it's a it's a consulting side of what we do. And so mm-hmm. we'll spend an hour, a half day, full day with someone just unpacking what their next three months, 60 days uh, over the next season could look like for them. Sometimes it's just that, which is really fun for us. And we are spending a lot of time talking to small business owners and big businesses as well. But listen, just like everybody watching, we're doing our very best to stay in business and to grow. I mean, let me just keep it real for a second. As this is this is my dream. Elevate is something that uh, was begun out of my mind and heart to really help people live and lead at a higher level. And right now, that's at risk, just like everybody else is at risk with their workplace. And so if there is a conversation that somebody's on here that's saying, I wonder if they would talk to you, we would love to talk to you. Um, because one, it's just fun to connect with people. We enjoy that. I'm an extrovert. I love, and so is Sean. We love uh, meeting with folks. Our entire team is poised to help. But mm-hmm. two is we want to do our very best. And I, I said this on a, um, a training recently is that you can gobble up emotional market share by just doing the right thing right now. Now, yes. And so like what you, you invited us on, we are not paying you a financial transaction, although we might get a bill later. I'm not real sure. <laughs> no bill, no bill. <laughs> but I can see your heart. Like your heart is like, let me bring these cats on to talk about what they do. And let me have some real talk about what's going on. And then just who knows where it'll land. I know now when I'm thinking about the services you provide, I'm more likely to say, Hey, Let's sit up Daryl and see. We're rethinking what we're doing here. This could be an opportunity for us. And so we're doing our very best with that as well as by offering as much value as we can as at low price as we can so that when the market does turn, people can say, oh, they're good people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on, on the practical side too, so that website that Billy keeps mentioning, which is virtualeventsecrets.today, we actually have a free download that anybody can go there and download. And it's a, we call oh, that's it the new. Ultimate, I forgot about that. Brand new. I just the, forgot about that. The ultimate See, he virtual... remembers stuff. I forget stuff. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, go get that thing. It's awesome. The ultimate virtual event roadmap. So it is a roadmap and it's literally, we took our process and how we approach virtual events, which it's the five steps in, in order to reach your destination and the five things you need to bring with you, which of course is like, and it's, it's basic event planning, which to us comes natural, but let's be real. Event planning is hard work but you want it to be memorable and fun, which is our heartbeat. That's what we love helping do. And so we took what we do and we put it into that virtual event roadmap and you can download it there at virtualeventsecrets.today. But basically it's the same event principles, but the medium might have changed. So your venue is now your streaming service, right? And the way that you deliver it from your stage is now your camera and your microphone. And there's some really simple things that you can do in order to make that. I know that Amazon has a lot of great resources there that you can tap directly into whatever you have lying around. Mm -hmm. Now, we're sitting here in a professional studio because we're a professional events company. We've got probably about $50,000 worth of equipment, which is why we're not broadcasting our address. We do have a security (laughs) system. Um, But um, (laughs) Yeah, it's a really strong security system. (laughs) But, um, but there are ways, like, I think the biggest recommendation I can give you is find, find what you already have, take inventory of what you already have, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe find, like, elevate it by one or two ways, and then the biggest thing is just make the setting of what you're filming feel a little bit different, feel more like an event with the lighting or the backdrop in some small way so that it doesn't feel like people are hopping on another Zoom call because they spend all day on their Zoom call. Yes, so that's probably the best thing that the best way I can recommend that. And like I said, the event roadmap is there at virtual event secrets dot today. Perfect. I like that. And to be candid, I mean, I've, I've repurposed stuff in my house. I, I share with you guys my microphones from my old rap days. There you um, go. I bought it from you know Guitar Center 20 years ago, probably. And it's still a great microphone. I said, I'm going to dust this thing up and use it. Yeah, man. And um, we had a comment from Ray Caldwell. He said, just subscribe to Elevate Experiences on YouTube. Thanks for the yeah. resources. So we got one new YouTube subscriber. There we go. Nice. So the, the interesting thing about this, we talked about events. There's sometimes there's one-on-one um, presentation people are doing. So I, I, I see people just kind of doing this kind of wherever they want to. Is there a big opportunity for people for one-on-one Zooms that they're missing right now? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, figure out the best direction to go with this. Go for it. I just I feel like people just kind of like use it like FaceTime sometimes. Like it's just hey, it's just a video call. Yeah. I don't have to set this up any kind of way. And I I cringe at that because I think when you're going to a uh, in person presentation, 
You're going to have on your best dress clothing. You're going to make sure your, your teeth are brushed, all those things that you would always do. But I feel like with a one-on-one, -on -one, people are like, eh, they're just at home with their kid. It's just a meeting. Yeah. So would you say there's some opportunity in that situation one-on-one -on -one, just like it is in a group? Yeah, and I'll shout out that same website, virtualeventssecrets.today. There's a training on there. I think we put it up, how to communicate well on camera. Isn't that uh, there? Yeah, I think it's up there. And if not, you can go to go there and you'll be able to navigate. But it's elevateexperiences.com slash virtual hyphen workshops. That that one page, we need to shorten it down to a cooler way of saying it. But it's yeah, elevated. Sean, I'm a one man show. I can't type all that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Close, so if you're watching, enough, yeah. um, I'll comment on the LinkedIn afterwards with that website. Or maybe someone, if our team is watching, they'll comment. But it's elevateexperiences.com slash virtual and then a hyphen workshops and all of our replays we've been doing 30 minute and one hour trainings we've probably completed 30 of them so far and our, most of our replays are up there yeah one in particular about that mm -hmm. training it, it made me think of the lighting is important the way you look at the camera is important yeah. the sound equipment used is important now if you're using it i mean on a budget you need to make sure you have the headphones plugged in so there's not feedback there's ways to do it not with a professional mic and things like this that we have but I would say most folks are showing up in a t-shirt or they don't want to turn their camera on. We've heard that excuse a lot saying, well, I'm with my kids. So I need to mute mine and turn my camera off. I'm like, well, if you really want to connect with some, particularly one-on-one -on -one, is you need to schedule it just like you would anything else. And I understand mm -hmm. like I, I get this dad guilt at times where I need to put on, you know, star Wars again for my kids to watch, or we watch uh, so many episodes on TV, but just keeping it real when you're connected with somebody one-on-one -on -one and it's an important phone call, you need to make sure that you're lit from the front, that you've got the undivided attention as much as you possibly can on that person. Because like you said, if you were with them live, you would do that very thing. So we do that same thing. Like for this call, we easily could have said, okay, Daryl, like we're going to go in our lobby and we're not going to set up the lights or anything. But like, no, mm -hmm. let's go in the studio. Let's plug in the good camera. Let's, let's make sure it looks and sounds the way that it should. Cause you've only got that one shot to make a first impression. And particularly when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody you need to make sure you, you're communicating that their time is valuable too. Well, and, and to your, like to compliment you, the guy with the bow tie, when you're on video, I was actually just on a call with someone. Uh, there's a fraternity or sorority that usually that has their convention in the summer. And mm -hmm. I told them like, Hey, you have to be known for something and you, whatever's happening on the screen, you have to make it entertaining. You have to be larger than life because they're used to being in person, seeing something. You, you are known for something, right? Like you look mm. great in the bow tie. And people, <laughs> people know you. It's, he, look he looks good. It's catchy. And so what we're kind of known for is um, this is actually what's marketed as a confetti cannon, right? So this is a party popper confetti cannon that you can buy online. I'm going to pull the string. It's a little bit of pop. It's a little confetti. You saw it, pop, but that's not that cool. That was boring. That was boring. So instead, what we like to do is if you partner with Elevate, or you come to our office, we'd love for people once this is over to come to our office. This is a confetti cannon. And so your, your guests should feel more like this. And it just like exploded beyond the camera. You can't <laughs> even was, see the confetti. You, that looked like this high power, like you would hurt, get a concussion from that. But I saw, but I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I almost broke but, our light that's sitting that, right up there. But we've shot 751 of those at our office and it's part of our tour. And if you saw it in the space, you would see uh, gold wrappings all around this place. But it's different than having this small confetti blast versus this massive yeah. celebration, the aftermath that you have there. And so that's that's what we're known for is those confetti type celebrations. Here, Sean, Sean's picking some up I'm, for you. I'm bringing so it up. See. Man, that's a lot. Yeah, it, 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 you you got to be known for something, right? That's a, that's a so how are you going to be, what are you going to do on camera that's going to be unique? That's going to be fun. That's going to make it entertaining and engaging. And you do that. There's, I know there's a guy, um, Jesse Cole, who is the owner of the Savannah Bananas, the like even below minor league baseball team, right? And he's known mm -hmm. for wearing a yellow tuxedo like everywhere he goes. So some small way that you can be known is important. Okay, great. I like and thank you for the compliment with the bow tie. It's totally an accident, but it's the, stuck with me ever since. <laughs> and um, so right now, I feel like this coronavirus is what uh 9-11 was to travel mm. will be to just interaction you know face-to-face -face interaction so what do you guys kind of see coming out of this because i mean georgia reopened a little bit today or friday that is um other states are starting to reopen i think it's still kind of early but some are starting to reopen so how do you guys feel like the virtual event world will be after this is all kind of settled 
Yeah, there's a phrase that I heard recently that if you don't have community, you're only a commodity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that connection with people will never change. But those of you that are not on TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, I would just say maybe now's the time to explore those platforms. Gary Vaynerchuk said it better than I can that social media is a slang term for the current state of the internet mm -hmm. and the current state of the internet is where we're going to live our lives. And I think we're going to find that over the next 12 to 18 months, once a vaccine is here and, you know, we're able to, to settle this, hopefully prayerfully, uh, to a place where we can get back together is people are going to long for a connection. It's going to look different. There probably won't be many high fives or handshakes like there used to be, but people being in the same place, moving in the same direction will never change. It's got to look different over the next 12 to 18, which is hard for us in our business. It's It radically changes everything. I can't tell you the number of event planners and venues and places we've talked to that are just sort of putting their hands up like, I don't know. But mm -hmm. it's all inkling of hope that if we can figure out to overcome this and connect virtually, then when it does come back, that community is going to be beautiful. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, literally, and this is me just keeping it real, is uh, my emotions are all over the place. So those of you that are watching this and uh, I don't want to paint a picture that everything's really, really easy and it's simple. Like, no, the emotions are all over the map. So I want to give you mental and emotional permission. If you're watching this saying, yeah, those guys got it all together. Listen, we're every day battling through, but the battle is worth it. You're worth it. And your career and your next step and your legacy moving forward is worth it. And so I just want to challenge you uh, to think about what the 10 year old version of you would be. I'm 43 years old. So what is the 53 year old Billy going to say back to me? What, what story is going to be told and what story am I going to be able to unpack because of that? And it, it very well could look very different than I anticipate, but I do know that the next 12 to 18 are going to be tricky, but I do know we're going to long from a com community and connection more than ever. And so I think whatever business you're in, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. think about community and connection beyond just in person. I think you'll win. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing I would add to that is I think that what, what is happening right now is everyone is being forced to connect with people in just a different way that they might not have thought of, or they might not have prioritized is more likely, right? Like we, I'm, my family lives all in Florida. And so we used to FaceTime with them, but we used to go and see friends in person. And so now we're being forced to see friends on FaceTime, right? So with our clients as businesses, we're used to seeing them in person. Now we're being forced to reimagine what does it look like just to inter interact with them. And so I think what's going to come out of this is a, I think once we're done, there's actually an interesting article and I'll have to, I'll have to find it, but they talked about the difference between a blizzard, a winter and an ice age, right? Mm -hmm. And originally people thought that Corona was going to hit, it was going to be a blizzard. It was going to be short. It's going to happen. It's going to pop up and flare and hopefully die out. Maybe we'd create a vaccine a lot sooner than we have now. But this organization, and this was four weeks ago when they published this article, they said, we're already preparing as if this is going to be not a winter, which a blizzard is usually an indicator that winter is coming. Mm -hmm. but this is going to be an ice age. Once every so often, there's something like cataclysmic that happens that changes the climate in the face of our planet. It kind of feels like that to me because now we're six weeks in, like you said, like there's some people that are seven weeks working from home now and there's really no real end in sight. And so what I think and what I hope is going to happen is I hope there's going to be a vaccine that's created like tomorrow so that we can go back to a sense of like, Did you see the gather. guy from Emory? What happened? The guy from Emory that volunteered to have the injection to see if it would work. That's cool. I didn't know yeah. that. Don't sign me up for that. <laughs> 31 year old cat that's getting his doctorate said, Hey, it's worth it to me. Like, I want to, I want to wow. try this and see. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you? Does my insurance cover that? Goodness. What? Yeah, pr probably not. Um, well, yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I think this, it is a, it'll be a hybrid organization. I think now, I mean, I feel like the knee jerk will be, Right now, we're going to do a bunch of Zoom calls and virtual things, and when everything's normal, okay, let's go back to the same old thing. But my, my kind of hope is that we kind of have a mixture of the two. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, look at the environment. The environment's re reacted greatly to this crisis, unfortunately, but smog levels are down, animals are out more frequently, people are more exercising. So mm -hmm. I kind of hope there's a hybrid where Agreed. we spend more time online just because it's better for the earth than traveling around. So how do you guys feel about that? Yeah, we just bought a rabbit this weekend, so we now have a rabbit at our house. 
But uh, yeah, we, for long yeah, we agree. So, you know, I look at the uh, gas and oil industry and looking uh, at how tough that is right now. But you look at the amount of smog and you look at how healthy people are becoming. I, I think it's like one way or the other. People are like really getting in shape or not getting in shape. So that's still to be determined. But we have more opportunities to connect with people. And I think we're forced to look more inward than we ever have because we can stimulate from things that are on the outside. For me, I miss Atlanta Hawks basketball. Yes, I'm a Hawks fan. I miss Atlanta Braves. But it's given me a chance to just pause and say, I'm going to go sit with my son and play Battleship. Like, I'm going to go color with my daughters. I'm going to hang out with them. We're actually going to go family walk. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of that hybrid piece that I hope comes back. I do miss sports, like just being an athlete myself. I just missed cheering on the teams that I love. Mm -hmm. But I'm really grateful because I don't know of another time in the history of the human race we've been forced to pause and stop. And as you said, there are some great things that are coming out of it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel the same way. Like, I hope that there's, I think, I think that I know this, that too much of any one thing is not a good thing, right? Like, I'm not a runner. I love joking about, like, there's people that are hardcore marathoners. Props to you guys. You guys are way more disciplined than I could ever be. And my argument is that the first person that ran a marathon died after finishing and delivering the message <laughs> when he ran the marathon, right? And so, um, but I, I say that to say, like, it's kind of like, again, going back to like the you talk, using our kids as an example. If I force my daughter to go on a walk outside with us, at first she's like, no, this is awful. I hate it. I want to stay inside or I want to do this. And then we get outside, she's like, yeah, can we go further? Like, it's, it's a little bit of like a, a push and shove. So right now we are forced to be one way. And so everything that's in my body and in my mind and my spirit is telling me like, no, I want it to be the other way. And I think that there should be a healthy mixture of both because I do want to travel and go see my family in Florida. I want to go see my friends in Arizona. I want to do those things again. I want to go to a football game again. Like, but I do want to spend more time at home and I do want mm -hmm. for walks outside and I want the air to be cleaner. So <laughs> we want our cake and to eat it too. Let's be honest. Yeah, it looks like this is forcing the cake to be viewed differently. So uh, yep. I, I hope that we hold on to this as a culture. America's been hit the hardest out of all the countries. But um, I think we've kind of been running fast, playing loose as a society and a culture for a long time. So I do hope this kind of makes us kind of step back and look at everything and reevaluate. Yeah. Um, but I'll be mindful of you guys' time. I, I told you we wouldn't go too long. So what are some um, parting words you want to leave with the audience as far as what you're doing or ways to kind of make their events better? Um, we get two perspectives here. So however you guys want to break it down. Go for it. Um, one principle that we use constantly at Elevate, actually two principles. One of them is uh, two words that we combined, which is flexicution, right? So we talk about having the best well-laid plans and being ready to change them at the last minute. And so when you prepare for virtual events, using flexicution, which is flexibility and execution. So have that well-laid plan, but be, be ready to change. And then the last one I'd say is put yourself in the seat of your audience. So the first time you do something, like if you go Facebook Live and that's going to be your platform, create a private Facebook group with just a couple of close friends or coworkers or family and go live there first and test things out on them. And so, and then allow yourself like record it and then go and watch it and see what they see. And that's been really two great principles. We do tests all the time. I mean, we were on... 15 minutes. I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal that, but we were on with you 15 go for minutes it. <laughs> live. So secrets there of screaming <laughs> with Daryl on LinkedIn live, but Hey, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is every football game I've ever been to in the fourth quarter, you've got the players to hold this up, right? You know what this is? It's fourth quarter. We got one opportunity, whether we're up or we're down. When that clock of the third quarter ticks down to zero, you see all the players in the sideline hold up a four. And I've always been so compelled, like, gosh, that's so cool. I never played football, so I would always watch it from the stands. But I was so compelled of how athletes, particularly in football, knew the fourth quarter was here and knew, like, the time was coming to an end. Um, I'm a baseball player, so you could tie in the ninth and, like, go a lot of innings <laughs> after that. But the fourth quarter in football, I guess you got overtime in football, too. But this fourth quarter idea, I did a video on YouTube on my YouTube channel, just called How to Live a Life with No Regrets. And it's this idea of living a fourth quarter life. Mm -hmm. Every opportunity we have, my biggest advice to people is just treat everybody like an end in themselves, not a means to an end, mm -hmm. particularly now more than ever, is treat everybody like an end in themselves. Like, I don't know, Daryl, like this has been a great conversation. This is super cool. 
I'm not expecting anything else out of you. I think if we can enter life with no expectations, just pump as much value as we can into it, just good things tend to happen to us. I just believe doing the right thing is always the right thing. And then let allowing, I'm a person of faith, so allowing the universe, faith, God, whatever you call it, to come back to you 100 fold because of the way that you treat people and the way you do your thing. So I just think that's a really good principle to live by whatever business you have. And I understand there's bills and there's P&L statements and there's revenue and there's profit and loss and there's all sorts of decisions that we need to work through and create. But I would just say, pretend like it's the fourth quarter and just go hard as you can that day, go to sleep, get up and do it again. Well, I appreciate you guys spending time with me. Um, it's been a great conversation and timely because everybody needs help with making these. Uh, no more webinars. We're throwing that word out the window. <laughs> We're going to get rid of that word. That's all but, right. Uh, we all got to basically make our online events better so engaging people because I, I do believe proximity is the only real difference right now. So, yeah. um, th guys, thank you. Um, feel free to comment all your different locations to find you. Actually, share, share real quick with people how they can find you. I heard you mention the YouTube channel. You got one new subscriber already, but share the different places they can find you guys. Yeah, I would say the place that we spend the most time or on LinkedIn and Instagram. Those are the places we spend most of our time. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for tips for culture, for virtual events, go to Elevate Experiences. Go check that out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We post a lot there, different tips and things we're working on. And on LinkedIn, we actually have a unique page on LinkedIn. I know we have one on Facebook too. Uh -huh. So LinkedIn and Facebook are both for events and culture. Tell them about that specifically. Yeah. So um, we'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn, Instagram, at Billy Bowie, at Sean Specy for Instagram at Elevate Experiences there. On LinkedIn, you can find us here. Um, go ahead and click the connect button. We'd love to connect with you. But we do have a couple of unique uh, groups. So we have a Facebook group that we just launched last week. We've already got about 50 people in it and it's uh, it's Virtual Event Ideas Exchange. And it's mm -hmm. just where we want to create a community for people to be able to share what's working, what's not working, ask for help, and we're helping share ideas um, different things. I'm about to post a video there myself. And then we do have a similar one on, I think it might be named exactly the same thing on LinkedIn. Just connect with uh, one of us there and we'll send you an invite there as well. Love it. Daryl, you're amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. No problem. Thanks for joining me. It was a great conversation. I like learning from people that are smarter than me. So thank you guys. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in for Business of Benefits. We'll make this into the audio version later, but you guys be safe, wash your hands, don't high five, all that good stuff. <laughs> Elbows. <laughs> I was in. Love it.